Welcome to Documentation Office Hours. It's the 3rd of March, 2022. Uh, topics that I've got on the agenda, news. Let's see, we had interactive tests as our, oh, sorry, it's the 4th of March because in India, it is in fact already the 4th. Interactive tests, I brought it forward from last time in case we need more discussion of it. Uh, Linux installer switch, this one I definitely wanna spend some more time on. And then Google Summer of Code, if there's any topics we need there. Other, oh, She Code Africa, yeah, we can talk that. Other topics, troubleshooting and changelog. Okay, this one I actually wanna pull up to the top because I've submitted it and wanted to invite everybody to please review it as your time allows. And I just started looking at it in the last 10 minutes while I was waiting for this meeting. Um, and I have one issue that I'd like to discuss um, because we, oh, it looks like this does have, I, we knew it was coming that you can, that the ability to turn off the agent to control or filter on the UI is gone. Right, right. It does. Absolutely. That but, is correct. But in Daniel's notes, there was another piece of it that um, I didn't know was going away. And I want to make sure that that PR in case it ever gets merged is still accurate, so. Oh, okay, good. Well, so then let's let's be sure that we take that up during that segment. Any other topics we need to bring into today's agenda? Yes, I wanted to, I have one question regarding the weekly change log. So a little okay. discussion on that as well. Great, so let's put that top of the list, weekly change log discussion, great, okay. Anything else? Good to go. Okay. So on the way of news, Jenkins 2.337 released. And uh, thanks very much to those who reviewed the change log. Fixes for several image and icon issues, still one or two left. So that's in progress. Um, other fixes coming in, happening in core. In particular, so there's some interesting fixes around remoting and establishing restart behaviors that, that it's good to see Jesse Glick and Basil Crow and uh, Jeff Thompson working together on some things that we didn't quite understand what was happening. And I think they've got a better idea now on what's happening with certain restart cases. Then the release candidate is out and testing is happening. Uh, I've submitted a draft pull request and on Thursday, the 10th of March, uh, Darren Pope and I will do a live stream introducing what's new in Jenkins 2.332.1. It will highlight some of these things. Um, we've still got an open question whether or not we'll include the Linux installer. I'm more and more persuaded we should, but I've got to re reopen the conversation on Jenkins.io or on, on the Jenkins developer list. Any questions on those two items of news? Okay, the next topic is change log and upgrade guide. So Meg, you had a question. What was your question about? Um, in the, um, into the file, it is line 6799. I think I'm, I'm just showing the rendered version. So agent to control oh. security subsystem. Right, yes. Um, and the admin customizable allow list for callables and file callables and file paths have been removed. Uh huh. Now those are the things that we say. So we've got this filter. If it's what if it's filtering out something legitimate that I need? I thought that this I can meant. No longer... I thought this meant you can no longer do a callable from the from you can no longer call from the agent to the to the controller to read a file that's what i was reading the pros on i just wanted to see if it was there um so i'll go back and check because i think somewhere in the docs there's it's not in the section that i was mucking with but there is a link to the docs about how to change that Ah, so that is probably so, something so that, that probably needs to be filtered out as well then. Let's or, go read the original pull request just to be sure because Daniel Daniel's really good with his pull request to, to whoops. Oh, not Jenkins in for just a minute. Sorry, just uh, a minute. There we go. No. Jenkins, Jenkins CI. I it would help if I remembered the name of the organization. <laughs> 
Okay, this is better. Okay, so it says it really does remove the callable allow list. And he says default entries has, are long obsolete. Everyone else had seven years to adapt their plugins. Removes the custom file access. Yeah, so I think I think he means it. Okay, let me go in because I'm I'm not an expert. It's one of those things I knew it was over there and I just referenced it and never. Let me go look at it and I'll send a link back to to make sure that this and I suppose actually people don't upgrade that fast. Uh, that we probably should not delete that doc immediately, but we should put a big warning at the top that as of release such and such, this no longer works. Right, right. Because Absolutely. it was a, yeah. This is this has been removed. This has been removed from Jenkins 2.332.1 and later. Right. So so that way we tell people outright this this used to work. And then we probably ought to put a to-do in it to remind ourselves a year from now to delete it completely. Yeah. It's, those kind of antiquities don't usually help help readers after about a year. Right, right. Because that's what because I did not, this is all about plugins. I was under the impression that people in their that people might in some of their old installations for something that was not a plugin that was their own stuff be mm. mucking with this but this sort of sounds like it was only the plugins okay so i you know not my area of expertise all right but so I did just, that address your concern on agent to controller it did it did Falls okay in the category of really not my prob problem except to make sure that the docs are sort of close to truth good all right. Okay. So anything else on that change log? Encourage everyone. I did sorting and sort of grouping of things from based on my own taste. You are welcome to dispute that. You are welcome to disagree with it. Please don't be shy if you find something you think would be better done better a different way. Yeah, there's a couple. It's just I, that's a, that's where I was just at that point when you pinged on the system. And I stopped looking. There were a couple up above there where the pros, I didn't really know what they were saying, but. Oh, good. Well, and so the, those are good things to have somebody else read them and then see, is there a better way to phrase it? Right. And I, you know, so can I just leave a note that says this needs to be, I don't know what this you is can. saying. You or... can. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Just, hey, I don't understand this is a great comment. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So, Diraj, you had a question on the weekly change log. What was your question? Um, so, my question is, the, the comments that I'm leaving every Monday, is it helpful to you? Because I think that I'm already commenting things that you already know. <laughs> so, just wanted to know. Uh, actually, quite the opposite. Better. I'm... I'm, I'm relying heavily on your reviews and making a much, much lighter review myself because of it. So, so I'm delighted with your reviews. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with the reviews from others because it lets me put much less, much less worry onto that, that thing before we publish it. So yes, please keep doing it if you've got time. Now, if you don't have time, I also understand that. It's a busy, we're all busy. No problem. Uh, just wanted to make sure it's helpful. So I'll make sure it happens. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. I am noticing that some of our frequent contributors are learning from this. So I'm seeing phraseology that we have put in on old PRs Perfect. showing up on new PRs. Right. So that, well, that's and, good. And Basil, for instance, has Basil, Basil wrote a, uh, a pull request template change that notes um, that the phrasing is imperative. Ah. And it's like, oh, well, thank you, Basil. Yes, that's in the style guide. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he put it into the pull request thing so that, hey, yes, please state it in the imperative voice. So nice. Good one. And yes, it means I have to remember what imperative means. <laughs> I, I just Google what imperative means. <laughs> All right. Well done. Well done, dear eyes. <laughs> The, the danger of not being a professional writer. Yes, in fact, that is a serious danger. Most right. What I, it's people who only know English don't know what cases are. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. Yeah. I had a All very right. diligent what? Latin teacher who taught me this stuff, so. 
only place I learned it. Okay. Any, anything else on the weekly change log? Yes, just trying. So Basil wrote about pull request template that nodes we use imperative phrasing. So can you tell me like, what does he mean? What do you mean by this statement? Uh -huh. um, instead of saying you should always name this with a prefix that's a breed of dog, just say name this file with a prefix that's so it's all it's getting rid of a lot of the soft all the you really ought to do this you should um just say do it um rather than saying you should walk to the store stay walk to the store that's imperative yeah so the way he describes it is mm -hmm. the change log should be in the imperative mode in other words write do this return that rather than does this returns that. So it, it shifts the, the, the sense of the sentence. Oh, and there's a link to our old change logs. So that's probably helping people too, too, because they can uh -huh. see examples of the people who are already writing. Uh -huh. I love that. Right. Yeah, now, now the, the daunting challenge here is far too many people see these comments and just ignore them. Oh, when yeah. they submit a pull request. So, so, but nonetheless, there, yeah. there, will, there are some who will read it and we hope that that will be a positive for them. Sure. Right. Yeah. So, so I understood like what he's trying to say here that it should be like, do this, return that, not, not does this and returns that. Um, so can we look at an example and translate it into imperative mode just for my help, if that's not Sure, sure. That's I think that's a great exercise. Let's do it. So let's look at the pull request pending review and the change log here. Oh, not that one, because that one we hope is already an imperative. But let's look at 2.338. This one. Okay. Now let's see if we get a, a sample here. Nope, those all look like they're in imperative voice. So how about? So um, can, can you scroll down? Uh -huh. So this one, there is this add Brazilian Portuguese translation property files. So this is a this is an imperative mode, but it would have been like non-imperative mode if it read something like adds Brazilian Portuguese translation, right? Right. At least I think that's what it means. It's also that we, we write it in present tense, not past tense. So instead of add present, or instead of saying added happened in the past, we say add. That's what this release is doing. Is it add? It, it will add Brazilian Portuguese translation property files. I'm not actually sure that that's technically imperative. Imperative is an order. Oh dear. Okay, so guide, guide us. This is good. This is why we like having a, a professional writer. Yeah, who, in general, you know, life is sweeter if you stay, keep us isolated. Um, but it's but it's good prose. It's well, the contrast. There is so much stuff that says because we used to do such and such, and it caused this and this problem. I mean, and you get in the regular doc, you have to read three or four lines before you find what they're talking about. Um, so you could almost say use crisp direct present tense or something mm. um it's like get to the point um so and if if calling it imperative is making it happy for everybody else i'm good because i don't know what else to call it succinctly great and and for me the examples are the thing that we we i okay keep keep the prose tight and simple mm -hmm. So Diraj, does that help okay. or still not? Yes, yes, it helps. Um, yes. Okay. That's all from my side. All right, anything else on the weekly change log? All right, so then and, and we can keep an eye for it. We can continue to watch for uh, samples like that and then discuss them here. I think that's a good thing to do. All right, so next topic was interactive tests. I think we had, we had 
brought this one to a conclusion last week. Is there more that you wanted to discuss there, Diraj? No, nothing else. Um, you had a really good discussion last time. Okay, so I'm, I'm just... Great. Yes. Except, wait a second. Um, what, what was the end result of that discussion, that it would be nice to have these things? Do we have issues filed for them? We do not have issues filed for them. Uh, do we have any hopes of ever doing them, or? I I have I have hopes of asking some particular people to help be more involved in interactive testing of the most recent UI changes. So I'm I'm running an initiative myself amongst some fellow developers to say, hey, this is a, a precious time for us to be doing more testing to explore these UI changes. And I think I'm I'm getting it across because I've got other people who are interested. So I okay, think we so will see additional. What it will be is additional review of pull requests. Okay, so that's happening. It's. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I and I think I think that's the best way. As I've looked at what how much progress Jan Farachik and. Alexander Brandes and Tim Jacom have brought to Jenkins in the three months since the last LTS. It's impressive. I do not want to slow them down. I want to help them go even faster. But I right. think in order to do that, we need more testing. And that testing right now is best done by human beings looking for surprises and oopses. And then we may eventually get to the point where automation would help us. But for right now, I think it's human beings looking for to be sure things are behaving and are structured the way we want them. Cool. All right. Anything else then on the interactive test topic? Okay, so next topic is, a, is still open. It is beginning in 2.335, continuing 3.36 and 3.37. The Linux installers now use system D as their way to control the process rather than using the system five style in it. That has the significant benefit that now we have one way of describing how to configure services on any machine that used a Linux installer, whether it was Debian or Ubuntu or Red Hat or CentOS or OpenSUSE or SUSE. Uh, any one of those six, or Amazon Linux for that matter, or Alibaba Linux. So many of these vendors have a system D-based configuration. And by us now you switching to system D, it's easier to describe how to do those kind of changes. Now the challenge is, shall we make the switch now? Switch now. 2.332.1 or wait three months. So another way of phrasing it is, is three weeks of, of testing in the weekly enough to switch? And my sense based on bug reports, it is. Is it getting extensive testing for all sorts of different distributions? Well, it, <laughs> good question. It's getting, oh dear, moment. Okay, sorry, didn't mean to have to cough there. Uh -huh. So it is getting as much testing as a weekly gets with installers. I don't have data yet. I was thinking that, okay, I could go try to find some data to see how many installations we get of a weekly. And, and that would give us some approximation. Okay, if there are 10,000 installations of a weekly um, within the first week of its install, that's, that's an interesting piece of data compared to if there are 100. For each install, do we know what platform it's on? We, we have some data, about, I've seen data re with regards to operating system, but not with regards particularly to installer. 
but if we know operating system, do we know whether it's just we've got a guess easy. then we've got a reasonable yeah. guess then that if they're installing it on a, a Debian Linux, for instance, they are probably using the Debian package installer. Most people do not bother with using the war file when they can use a, a packaged installer. Right. Right. And uh, that would include you, but yeah, that's what I was thinking. If we found out that we had very small coverage, well, like some of these less free, I'm, I'm going to assume that Ubuntu, Debian, and Red Hat are pretty, and Fedora are pretty well tested. Um, uh, I think, I think that's a, a safe assumption, but, but um, I think it's worth care, it. How much do we care? Like, I don't know how much open Suze and Suze is out there right now. And, and, and I don't, I don't know. I know that we don't have documentation on our official documentation page for open Susie or for Susie. Right. So I'm not terribly worried about that one. I'm glad we've got the installer, but it has some oddities uh, that, that I, I, I'm not ready to worry about at the moment, or at least it did before. And, right. and so it was it was a different thing for me. Susie was sort of a I'm less worried about it than I am about Debian and Red Hat. Right. Okay, so so we do still need a, a documentation page on managing system D services. We've got an agreement from last time on what topics, etc. So I feel really good about that, and I'm I'm comfortable that I think I can get that done before the Wednesday release, so that it would be ready to go. Uh, so you're now the number one writer here, huh? Well, I, among I think, other things, well, the, the anything challenge, to do with why you're exhausted by Thursday? <laughs> well, the the challenges the challenges that uh, we've got lots of writing to do and not a lot of time to do it. So, right. But I guess, I guess what I'm, what I'm, are there any strong objections or any objections to the notion that, Hey, let's make the switch now or things where you say, no, I'm concerned about that. That's too risky. No, it's gotta, we've gotta get it out there. You know, it's, this is the future. Yeah. And it's going to blow something up. Right. Now is as good a time as any to blow things up. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. Well, and another way to say what you just said, Meg, is that will three more months actually surface the classes of problems that we see, we will likely see when we do it in LTS? And I think the answer is no, because LTS users are different right. than weekly users. And therefore, we may not get any 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 significant amount of additional reports between now and three months from now, when, which would be our next window to, to do a change like this. We shouldn't do this kind of a change on a dot two or a dot three. Right. So, so the next dot one would be June. Yeah. Um, would we, would it make any difference if we put out, I don't know, bulletins or whatever in the community alerting that this is about to happen and- Oh, just, oh yes. You know, Say, and it would be in the upgrade you, guide. This would definitely. What I'm, what I'm thinking is that there, there's probably a lot of people who sometimes test, get around to testing, and sometimes they don't, to just uh -huh. alert people that this is coming. And if you think it might be a biggie for you, you might want to test. Oh, oh. For the LTS. Yeah, and, on, yeah. and we actually did that with people who had expressed interest in System D, and they they did test it. We were really grateful for them during the development phase before it was ever released in weekly. We had reports from several users of positive testing. So, so we were very, very grateful for that. Yeah, so maybe that's already been done. So I was seeing just, you know, not the normal sort of testing that most of these get to alert people. This is a special one that could be big. Right. So, but. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to assume that given that I haven't heard any strong objections, I'm going to assume it's okay with those of you who are here, and I'll continue the conversation in the developer mailing list. That one, that's where it really needs to to be final, because yeah, that's that's where we started a week ago. Yeah. Sure. All right. 
next topic I had on the list was Google Summer of Code. Any questions or, or concerns there? Uh, the, the office hours start in 30 minutes there. So we will have time for an office hours discussion if there's something office hours related. That is, are we starting to see candidates who are interested in this? Yes, yeah, we've had, we've had, we had 20 people attend the webinar uh -huh. that highlighted, highlighted the, talked about project ideas. We've had from three to six attend every office hours session and different people at different times. So, so yeah, it, it looks, it's, it's, I'm not sure it's as heavy an involvement or as deep involvement as we've had in past Google Summer of Code episodes, but it's been good. It's positive. Yeah, and the channels um, seem very active too. So like people are asking questions on like Gitter and I'm mostly focused on the Gitter stuff. I haven't really checked the community channel, but I know the Gitter is like fairly active. So that's a big positive too, right? Because it means that people are asking questions and trying things out, which is always a good thing. And then right. hopefully picking up some of the, uh, and good for first time users. Right. So it's like a chance, like even a chance to explore open source stuff. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. so. And I, I know that I'm seeing, um, seeing friendly issues are being addressed because I've seen or being attempted maybe is the better way to say it. And, and I've seen it with two, two, two different people attempting a friendly issue on the Git client plugin. So that, that's great. Fabulous. Maybe one of them would like to work on uh, the system D documentation. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like maybe we should have put in for a Google season of docs, but I don't uh, no, I'm point. I'm not ready to mentor Google season of <laughs> yeah. docs. That, it's been a, there, it's a done thing. that. Yes, that's it's, it's, that's a busy project. It's a, it's a very large effort. Yes, it is a yeah. very large effort project. All right. All right, next topic then, She Code Africa contribute on. So I submitted three project ideas, inclusive naming, screenshot updates, and the one other was pipeline docs improvement. Pipeline help improvement. Is that or similar pipeline. to the one for last from last year? Yes, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, and cool. what, I, what I did was offered two people on this one, proposed we would accept two to mentor, two on this one, and two on this one. The idea being that we can probably find mentors to support, one mentor could support two people and we won't be overwhelming anybody. Or if we get two mentors for two people, even better. Sure. What about the first bullet? Did not submit that one. I want to talk to Zenob about it before. Okay. and didn't submit the test, the tutorials. Yeah. And that covered the topics that I had on She Code Africa. Troubleshooting yes, so section. Oh, go ahead, Diraj. Sorry. So the third point, uh, the screenshot updates for Jenkins.io. That's the manual one, right? Correct. Yes, this is the interactive okay. one. Okay. Interactive, yes. Better word. Yeah, not automated. Okay, thanks. Yeah, be, and when when I look at the the idea at the idea that Gavin Mogan offered of hey, automate that thing, I think that's a great, great idea, but I'm not sure it's given our experience last year with the uh, the contributors, I'm not sure that that's the kind of project I would drop onto one of them. It, it, that's, that's a lot of Java code and a lot of things that could go wrong very, very quickly and need a lot of interaction. Diraj, you, I could see you might be able to be successful at it because you've had already months of experience in test automation. I'm not sure that these, these first time contributors have that benefit. Yeah. Makes sense. But, uh, I also researched on it and I found a very nice article from Cloudbees itself. 
mm. uh, which is titled automating screenshots in documentation so it's exactly what we are looking for oh cool oh. it's written okay. by chris ward so very very helpful huh interesting very okay very good Very good. All right. Anything else on Chico de Africa? Uh, yeah. What's the timeline? Uh, timeline. Good question. So timeline. Oops. My understanding is it's April uh, to mid-May with two weeks of, of community bonding four weeks of development. Uh, selection, I believe, is happening in, in, in March. Did, is that what you're okay. asking with regards to timeline, Diraj? Yes, exactly. Okay. So, helpful. All right. Last topic on my list was troubleshooting section, and I don't have anything additional there. Are there, Zenob was going to submit a pull request and I haven't had a chance to have any conversation with her. I haven't seen the pull request, so I assume it's still in progress. Any other topics we should address or do we wanna call ourselves done for today and we'll meet again in a week? Should I ask about the PR from a non-Mormon, but from heck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to laugh so loud. That's great. <laughs> I, we probably should go over some of the things. If there's anything else that's open, like, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it. That's that's. Let's go ahead and take a look at open pull requests. I like that. I have my old list. There's actually a couple of others on there that had notes. Actually, if you want to go down in the agenda. Okay, let's do there it. There were a couple others that I made notes on. I can't remember. I think there's some that we hadn't discussed. Okay, we continuing could, like, I downward. Been... Tell me when to stop. All right, so open PRs. And when did I stop doing it? Here we go. Here we I, go. I think these are it, right? Right. Yes. Okay, any particular ones you want to take first? Um. Well, I, I mean, all of it, we had the discussion for 3392, but where are we, is that? Let's take a look and see. So uh, what, what are the comments? The checks have passed. Editorial changes made in January. The original author seems to have disappeared from the. Yeah, yeah. This was. I think this was was uh, this came from. Yeah, uh, was a contributor. Um, contributed some things to you two years ago, and we can either we could either continue it or close it and reopen with somebody else. Either is fine. Now I don't see. I didn't. Oleg is the one who requested changes. What changes did he request? Oh, that didn't help. I need to see which changes he requested. So Oh, oh, he's saying that this is in the wrong location. Got it. Okay. Yeah, this <laughs> Well, the whole except structure that, this doc set is so bad, I don't care anymore. <laughs> okay, so so well, okay, so saying part of not part of the okay, but the managing page, this is part of the user handbook, right? So so I'm not sure I understand his objection there because it's 
it's all part of the user handbook. Then the user handbook includes things that it's got a section, a chapter on system administration and a chapter on managing Jenkins. So now maybe he means that this should go in the, not in the, not in the managing section, but rather in the pipeline section, maybe. Yeah, maybe is that what he means by user? So no, okay. So let's read it. So user, yeah, Jenkins users who develop pipelines, not admins. So let's look at. Let me just remind myself of the structure. Okay, so what we've got here is using Jenkins, and then we've got the pipeline section. Is this the place where spawning the information about spawning processes? Well. But it's more than just pipeline that does this, right? Freestyle right. jobs also do it. Right. I mean, there, the doc set. I don't know if we'd ever have resources of priority, but the, it's you know we're saved by search. The structure has all sorts of problems in it. Right. I don't think I would hold out information just because it's submitted to the wrong place, when we don't have a writer who can convert it to put it into the right place. Are you still getting your writer eventually? Your writer? I am. Yes, I have confirmed it. We've got a. We've done a plan on how that writer will, what how we'll successfully onboard them, and they're coming soon. This could be a good good project, you know, for somebody like that who can actually devote to it. Right. Yep. Um. If this is good information, I put it in, even if it's not in the perfect split. But that's me. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I, I think you've got, there are plenty of things where we should, we should probably just accept that we're going to apply your, your proposed changes and be done with it, say. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree with you here. I don't see any value in saying, talking about a Jenkins version that was released five years ago. Right. We support so, current current LTS and current weekly. So talking about things that are that old doesn't help anybody. So so we could go back, wait a minute, where that, where did it go? Let's, can, can you edit that comment? I can, yes. Okay. Um, let's just say, Jenkins detects this situation. Right. And that's good, isn't it? It is. I think that's very reasonable. Uh, okay, here's another one we can include in the batch. This is sentence per line and better phrasing. Yeah, describing no, nope, no, nope, that's not what I wanted. My mistake. Okay, whenever a process. Oops. Okay. What minor happened in edit. standard air? What did I do there? It's just got a, a a back quote in the wrong location. Okay. Okay. Uh, e O F. Do people actually understand it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I agree. End of file is much better. Or well, the e, yes. it may show up as the EOF parent end of file, or I don't know, or oh yes, or end of file EOF or something. Because mm -hmm. I think the EOF I think does show up in the error. Right. A lot of this right. stuff makes sense. Okay. Okay. You know, forking in processes. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> oh, that's fun. An HTTP link? Really? Come on, it's got to be HTTPS now. Nope. <laughs> Seriously. Uh -huh. To run a command is a demon. Well, 
Yeah, this and this is the one we use on on uh, Red Hat Demon. I don't know. EPEL is actually that provides it. Uh, but you know, it's information, so it is. I don't yeah. know if it needs to be through that. Security. So this is this is the description from the Red Hat from the Fedora package sources of the same thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Pretty trivial, I think. Uh, presence. And this one is still still valid. I think so. Oh, it is. How sad. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yes, that's accurate. Thank you. Since XP is dead. Do, I was going to say, is it just another workaround? Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I don't remember the last time somebody talked to me about ant. That's very impressive. <laughs> I use it, use it very frequently in test automation. Something but... I don't remember. Something else big in Jenkins uses ant syntax. That's like, it's uh, sort of like a no way related to ant. Wild but cards. I remember, yeah, file, file matching wildcards. Yeah. And it's yeah. everywhere. It's yeah. Also, the, the, the ant the ant class loader is actually used. So they're all yeah, lots of places. All right. So Meg, we've reviewed them. I'm gonna commit the suggestions. Cool. And then does that leave the only open issue, whether this belongs in a different section of the docs? Yeah, then it's just then it's just Oleg's feedback and and we could truthfully just decide we're going to override it. Oleg right now doesn't really have time to to contribute to the Jenkins project and I understand that. That's How well we, I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No no shame with that. I have authority to override that and just say, "Hey, we're going to go ahead. I would like to have it build first, but I could schedule it to auto merge." Okay. Oh, whoops. Why did I not oh. get this one included? Okay, we'll see. I, I'm not sure I understand that. I made some mistake. Just a minute, Meg. Okay. I want to see this page. Oh, it's an outdated suggestion. Okay, so it's somehow already known that this will set the bill. Hmm. So I don't know what on that one it's complaining about, but I can enable auto merge and override or ask Oleg to review it again. Yeah, it's just I don't I don't think that we're going to get any difference. Truthfully, his, no. his question is still where does it belong? And the answer for me is we want the content, uh, the location in the managing chapter is not bad because it's it's at least general purpose. It's not limited to pipeline. Right. And if they search, they'll find it. Right. Okay, so we'll let that one run for now, see if it passes the CI, and then we can come back to it. Okay. I don't know, can we get rid of another one in 10 minutes? We can try. Let's see. Oh. 3381 looks like it might be one that goes fast. It's been a while, I don't remember these, but just reading that note. 
agents with wind. What was my? Okay, so my comments were all handled. Oleg requested changes, he approved. Oh, it needs to have conflicts resolved. Okay. Mm. Oh, and that's a large conflict. So oh, this is this is going to need me to do. I've got to have a real command line to do this. I can't resolve Although, that level of conflicts from the, the GitHub oh, UI. Yes. Um, so this one just needs back. conflicts resolved. I will. Um, what is this? Thirty three eighty one. Let me look at it because. What I think that is, is something new that I shoved into that chapter, which is basically my definition of all the components that's hmm. conflicting with this. It may be well, one of those where we want to keep both. Yeah, so let's let's do a, let's take the easy way out here and let's do it. Let's do the conflict resolution while we've got time. Oh, okay. And that's unless others object, I, I don't see any Let's do it and see if we can get there in the time we've got. So GHPR checkout, was it 3381? 3381. Yes. Okay, git merge master, and it's going to say conflict. Okay. And the one file that has the conflict is right there. Okay, so there's the middle of the conflict marker. Here's the start. This head line right here, Meg, do you see my screen? Uh-huh, I do. Okay, so and that's this is from this new PR. Um, let's see, I think so. And the existing content is from is components of distributed builds. Which is that stuff that I added. Remember, I, I put oh, good. all of this into security and it was too much. So okay, good. So, so we want so to keep I think both. We want both of them. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that's easy. Monitor and restart offline agents is right here. Uh oh. Something just went funny. Just a minute. Yeah. Was, okay, so cute. monitor and restart offline agents. So components of distributed builds probably belongs very early in the file, right? Right, that's what I, one thing I'm thinking that maybe should be before this. Great, okay, so let's do that like this. Okay, components of distributed builds like so. Launch inbound agent via Windows scheduler. Oh yeah, that's much more obscure than monitor and restart offline agents. Okay, why did the indentation of that change? But it should be at level two, yeah. Creating agents. Was it like a tab that got converted, or like a like a tab instead of? Could, could have been, yeah. yeah creating like agents. In there and... I think it's at the right spot. So okay. now let's see how it looks. So it has the section components of distributed builds. Meg, this is the section you had added, right? Right. Okay, and then it keeps. Except okay, and previously it was three levels in, it really was. So now the question is, is this a subheading? So creating agents is the level two head. Uh-huh. Is, and then it's got a launch inbound agents via Windows scheduler, another level two head. Monitor and restart, that really should be at level two. This is a different yes. thing. Okay, so the, that change is intentional. It's correct. Right. So I think. Uh, 
So if we do a diff against the master branch, oh, shame on us. Just a minute. Now I have to fix something. We have trailing white space. Uh, oh, dear. And I did that to you. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, it's easy to fix. Yes. Okay. So. Okay, now we'll look at the diffs. Uh, could we real quickly build it? I want to make sure something going by, I had it, it looked like maybe that stuff that I'd put in there had gotten split into two parts that some of those components were being described after. But that's. Sorry, you you say oh. say that again, Meg. I was reading reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, could could we run a make uh, sure. run make and take a look at the format? Sure. Is going through quickly. I had something look like part of what I'd written got separated from the first part. Oh, oh, okay, good. This is a good thing to check then. Oh, six fifty eight. You guys got to go. Okay, so here it is. Oh, well, no, maybe it's not, not yet. Patience, patience, patience. Oh, on one clock, we've got three minutes. It's a two. Okay, so, uh, and this was documentation managing, and nodes. it is- Managing nodes. You're going right by managing nodes down about two thirds of the way. Down, up, Got it. Yeah. Okay, right there. Oh, that's still got the work in progress. I think that, well, let's look and see what we've got. Okay. Well, and, and we can take that out as well while we're here. Yeah. Okay, so we're, okay, so we've got components of components. distributed builds. And then we've got Darren's creating agents, beautiful. launching an inbound agent. Oh. Yeah. And then monitor and restart offline agents. That's not bad. A couple of months ago, all we had was monitoring the and restarting the um, offline. Well, and with components agents, so. of distributed builds in there, I think we we are perfectly justified in saying this is no longer a work in progress. I agree. So let's. And Darren's between that and Darren's video, we've got pretty good content there, actually. So let's edit that. Yeah. Remember, I'm not in Emacs. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, want to see it one more time or ready to go? Oh, and I've got to end because I've got to get into the next session. That's right. right. I, I think it looks good though. I think it's close enough. Yeah. All right, I'll push. All right. Thanks everybody. Okay, and gonna merge later then? Uh, yeah, okay. after it passes. See ya. Okay, take care, Thanks. have a good see meeting, you. bye.